Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis of the Shankarayas Academy brought to you by the Civilspedia team. This editorial analysis is for the current affairs for the date 17th of October 2024. The topics for discussion are as follows. The article titled The Body Shop from the Indian Express discusses about the organ transplantation and its consequences associated with it in country like India and issues arising out of this trafficking. Next article is the object failure titled from the Hindu where it discusses about the rank of India in the global hunger index of the year 2024. And finally, the article titled the $500 billion opportunity from the Indian Express talks about the target of India in the 2030 among the electronic management. So without any much further delay, let's get into the article's discussion. But before that, there's just a small announcement to be made. The pre-storming UPSC prelims test series of 2025 is starting from the 19th of October for the batch 2. So interested students can look for the link in the description for their admission. Now, without any much delay, let's get into the article's discussion. Now, moving to the second editorial article titled The Body Shop. The article highlights the issue of kidney tra trafficking in India, emphasizing the need for stricter regulations and increased awareness about organ donation. Over the past decade and a half, India has become a hub for organ transplants but along with legitimate surgeries there are networks of traffickers who exploit this loopholes in the system this article discusses how illicit operations involving doctors hospital administrations and organ traffickers have thrived especially between india and its neighboring countries like myanmar and bangladesh so before moving on to the article discussion let us see a main question in relevance to this issue Despite stringent legal frameworks like the Transplantation of Human Organs Act, organ trafficking continues to thrive in India. Discuss. So now let us see a framework for it. First, let us see status of organ transplantation in India. According to the National Organ and Tissue Transplant Organization, that is the NOTTO, India faces a huge gap between the demand and supply of organs, annually around 2 lakh patients need a kidney transplant but only 8,000 receive one. Similarly, 50,000 people need a liver transplant but only about 1,500 transplants take place. So, this signifies a huge gap. Next is the Transplantation of Human Organs Act of 1994. This is the key legislation to regulate organ transplantation. It prohibits organ trafficking and outlines rules for legal transplants. Next is the illegal organ trade statistics. Here, India has been identified as one of the hot spots for illegal organ trafficking. Reports suggest that around 10 to 15 percent of all organ transplants in India may involve illegal elements. Having a global estimate, the World Health Organization estimates that around 10 percent of the organ transplants globally involve commercial transactions with India contributing significantly to this figure. So, let us see the issues relating to this context. First is the demand and supply gap as I told. India's demand for organs far exceeds the available supply. This is the primary factor driving organ trafficking as desperate patients turn to illegal markets. Next is having a loophole in regulations. Despite the transplantation of the Human Organs Act, illegal trafficking continues due to weak enforcement, corruption and forged documents. Thus, the process of verifying the organ donors and recipients is often compromised. Next is the issue of cross-border trafficking. Here, India shares a humongous borders with countries like Nepal, Bangladesh and Myanmar, leading to an influx of trafficked organs. The 2023 case of Myanmar-based organ trafficking is a prime example. Next is misuse of the altruistic donations. The provision for altruistic donations where an unrelated donor can donate voluntary is often misused. Here, traffickers forge relationships between the donors and recipients to bypass the regulations. Next is having poor public awareness. Many people are unaware of the legal frameworks for organ donation leading to very few registered donors. The culture and religious beliefs are associated with posthumous donation further limit voluntary contributions. Next is the private sector dominance. 
या सिग्निफिकेंट पोर्शन ऑफ ऑर्गन ट्रांसप्लांट्स अकर्स इन प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल्स दस दिस सेक्टर ऑफ एन लैक्स ट्रांसपेरेंसी लीडिंग टू इश्यूज सच एस ओवर चार्जिंग अनएथिकल प्रैक्टिस एंड लिंक्स टू ट्राफिकिंग now moving on to the challenges first is the identification of donor here verifying whether the donors are giving organs voluntarily or under force or coercion is challenging traffickers use false documents making it difficult to detect illegal activities next is the law enforcement issues law enforcement agencies often lack the resources and are sometimes not in action during the trafficking operations further complicating the situation along with the involvement of corruption next is having ethical dilemmas healthcare professionals face ethical issues when dealing with patients in desperate need of organs here they may deliberately become part of trafficking network sometimes for the involvement of greedier money next is the international organ markets the rise of medical tourism has also contributed to organ trafficking foreign nationals often seek cheaper organ transplants in india thus it increasing the demand for trafficked organs now moving on to the way forward here first we have to strengthen the enforcement the government agencies need to enforce stricter laws close the legal loopholes and ensure transparency in the transplantation process digital database for organ transplantations and donor recipient matching must be streamlined to reduce the frauds next is having a enhanced surveillance improved surveillance at hospitals and cooperation between states and the neighboring countries can help to reduce the cross border trafficking here strong penalties and continuous monitoring of transplant centers are important next is the public awareness promoting organ donation through government backed campaigns can help address misconception your increased awareness about deceased organ donation programs is critical to reducing the demand for illegal organs next is to have an encouraging deceased organ donation india should actively promote cadaver organ donations simplifying registration processes and establishing a strong deceased donor network through state run initiatives like Jeevan Dhan from Telangana can close the supply gap. Cadaver organ donations are nothing but donor is taken to an operating room, organs are surgically removed, and the organs are sent to the transplant hospitals where the candidates would be waiting for them. Next is having a medical transparency. The private sector must stick to stricter standards regarding organ donation and transplantation. Here, the regulatory body should conduct frequent audits to ensure compliance. Next is tackling cross border trafficking. India needs bilateral and multilateral cooperation with neighboring countries to address cross border trafficking effectively. Joint task forces and intelligence sharing can help. Next is having a technological integration. Here the government should introduce the blockchain technology for example to record and track the transplants ensuring transparency. And finally the capacity building for law enforcement is important here training law enforcement agencies to identify and stop organ trafficking is essential the government institutions must collaborate with international bodies like the united nations office on drugs and crime that is the un odc to improve the capabilities in tackling this issue so this article is nothing but basically the fun size of the movie doctor now moving on to the first editorial article titled object failure which talks about the india's 2024 global hunger index the article highlights india's concerning status in the 2024 global hunger index with 200 million undernourished citizens ranking 105th out of 127 countries despite the economic growth and high food production india faces several issues like the high food inflation income equality and poor health outcomes including high infant mortality and child stunting It criticizes the systematic failures in addressing the food security and nutrition which threatens the India's developmental aspects. So before moving on to the article first let us see a main question obesity is a form of malnutrition faced by the developed nations justify here the question is nothing but how malnutrition is not just a matter of physical body but it is also a matter of a nation as a whole so let us see a framework according to this question now first let us see what is malnourishment is malnourishment refers 
to a condition where a person's diet lacks the proper balance of nutrients either due to insufficient intake or poor absorption of nutrients it can occur in two main forms one is undernutrition here this happens when a person doesn't get enough calories protein or essential vitamins and minerals undernutrition leads to problems like stunting which is the low height for age wasting which is the low weight for a height underweight which is low weight for the age and micronutrient def- deficiencies like the lack of proper vitamins or minerals such as iron iodine or vitamin a a next form is the overnutrition here this occurs when there is an excess intake of nutrients often linked to overeating or overconsuming too much unhealthy food which can lead to obesity heart diseases and diabetes Now moving on to the major causes of malnutrition first and foremost is the poverty and economic inequality here poverty can limit access to nutritious food in economically disadvantaged households families often rely on low cost or calorie deficit foods that lack essential nutrients just because they are sold in a lesser amount thus along with it income equality worsens this issue as wealthier sections of the society have access to better food while the poorer groups struggle with food insecurity next is having inadequate health services lack of access to basic healthcare services also contribute significantly to malnutrition infections and diseases like diarrhea respiratory infections and intestinal parasites reduce the body's ability to absorb nutrients without proper health care and immunization children and adults in vulnerable communities are more likely to suffer from the chronic malnutrition next is having a poor maternal and child care practices malnutrition begins from the birth due to the poor maternal nutrition if pregnant women do not receive adequate nutrients their children may born underweight or malnourished here improper infant feeding practices such as non breastfeeding or inadequate diets can lead to malnutrition due to a child's critical developmental stage next is having a food security and unstable food supply all over frequent food shortages in a country caused by droughts floods or poor agricultural productivity can lead to malnutrition especially in rural areas in developing countries food security is unstable due to climate change extreme weather conditions like the heat waves and inefficient food distribution systems all of which can impact the availability and affordability of nutritious food next is the lack of education and awareness less awareness about the poor dietary choices in many regions can be a hurdle here people are unaware of the importance of a balanced diet and might prioritize calorie dense or nutrient poor foods cultural practices or misinformation leading to unhealthy eating habits that result in both undernutrition and overnutrition now looking at the impact of malnutrition on a overall economic and a social impact it hampers the economic growth by reducing the productivity increasing healthcare cost at the end and stunting that is reducing the human capital development at the ultimate end malnourished individuals particularly children face cognitive and physical impairments leading to lower educational achievement and has an impact in their earning potential in coming years this can weaken the workforce limit economic opportunities and it increases the poverty this can lead to the effect in the gdp growth ultimately next is the health impact it leads to the weakened immune system increased resistance towards the infections and higher mortality rates especially in children and women chronic malnutrition can result in long term health issues like anemia poor bone health and organ dysfunction in pregnant women it leads to complications and poor birth outcomes further perpetuating a cycle of poor health across generations next is the most untold thing which is the psychological impact here in children it impairs brain development leading to learning difficulties reduced attention span memory issues and lower iq which can affect their school performance and interactions in adults malnutrition is linked to increased stress anxiety depression and reduced emotional well-being malnourished individuals often experience feelings of hopelessness and social withdrawal and reduced self esteem which can lead to mental health issues over time and finally is having a cultural impact it can hinder the growth and development of children where the uh, participation in education so social activities are reduced the health implication can affect the family structure as caregivers focus on 
survival rather than cultural preservation ultimately eroding the traditions and values passed through generations now looking at the government initiatives to reduce the malnutrition here the government of india has implemented several schemes and programs aimed at reducing malnutrition particularly among children pregnant women and lactating mother first is the integrated child development service of 1975 it aims to provide nutritional and health status of children under 6 years to promote proper growth and development their health checkups immunization schemes all done through the anganwadi centers next is the famous midday meal scheme it provides free lunches to school children in government and government aided schools the program aims to enhance the nutritional status of children improve the attendance and encourage them to continue their education next is the national nutritional mission on 2018 which is the portion abhiyan this mission focuses on reducing malnutrition in a targeted manner it aims to promote nutritional awareness to enhance the delivery of the nutritional service and monitor the nutritional indicators through the technology next is the important one which is the national food security act of 2013 here it provides subsidized food grains to ensure food security for vulnerable populations ensuring access indirectly to address the malnutrition and finally is the national health mission here it focuses on improving the maternal and child health and nutrition by integrating the health services thus promoting awareness and ensuring access to healthcare as a whole thus malnutrition remains a significant global challenge particularly in low and middle income countries efforts to address them requires more comprehensive strategies that can include health education agriculture and other social protection systems to create a enabling environment for proper nutrition and health this is the last article for today titled the 500 billion dollars opportunity here the context is it highlights india's 500 billion dollar electronics manufacturing target by 2030 emphasizing the need for reforms in regulatory policies and creating competitive manufacturing hubs it stressed on learning from successful global regions like the shenzhen which thrives on large clusters of hubs ease of business and stronger investor support india's electronic clusters like noida in uttar pradesh and shri perumbatur in chennai show promise but need an increase of better infrastructure simplify taxes and access to resources to compete globally so in related to this article let us see a mains question and move forward with the article discussion examine the current state of electronics manufacturing in india highlighting the major challenges faced by industry suggest measures to enhance india's global competitiveness in this sector so now we will be moving forward to answer this question i also appreciate these students who are watching this video to provide their answer in the comment section for this question as well as for the last two previous questions Now, looking into the electronic manufacturing in India, this sector has witnessed significant growth in recent years due to the favorable government policies, due to the increased demand and increased investments. Here, the government aims to transform India into a global hub for electronics manufacturing, reducing the reliance on imports and boosting the exports. Now, looking at the growth and market size, according to the Ministry of electronics and information technology india is the second largest mobile phone manufacturer in the world producing all over 300 million units annually here the electronic manufacturing industry in india is estimated to reach 300 billion dollars by 2026 thus having an ambitious target of 500 billion dollar by 2030 looking into the current challenges first is the supply chain dependency india heavily relies on imports for critical components like the semiconductors display panels chipsets mainly from china increasing their vulnerability to global disruptions next is having an infrastructure gap lack of world class manufacturing infrastructure including in insufficient power logistics and transportation facilities reduces the growth next is having a skilled workforce there is a very much shortage of skilled labor with expertise of high end electronic manufacturing design and the need for research and development next is high cost of capital here the electronic manufacturing units face high operational and capital cost compared to other competing nations like china and vietnam 
and next is the regulatory and compliance issues here complex procedures and regulatory policies can slow down the operations and reduce india's competitiveness in the global market now moving on to the schemes to promote electronic manufacturing first is the production linked incentive that is the pli scheme here it the objective is to increase domestic manufacturing capacity and attract large investment in electronics financial incentive of 4 to 6% of incremental sales of electronics are manufactured in india high value products like the mobile phones electronic components and medical devices are a big focus example apple suppliers have started their manufacturing in india making india a hub for iphone production next is modified electronics manufacturing cluster that is the emc 2.0 scheme here the objective is to develop the state of the art infrastructure and attract companies for investment there are incentives for setting up for clusters with basic infrastructure like roads water electricity and common facilities like testing and warehousing here the government covers up to 50% of the project cost for example clusters in tamil nadu and uttar pradesh are contributing to 50% of india's electronics export next is scheme for promotion of manufacturing of electronic components and semiconductors or abbreviated as specs here the objective is to support the local manufacturing of critical components that is the semiconductors displays and sensors and so on here the key feature is financial in, uh, incentives of almost 25% is provided for example global chip manufacturing such as the intel are exploring opportunities in india due to this initiative and finally is the focus on the green electronics and sustainability here the objective is to integrate environmentally sustainable practices into the electronic manufacturing so initiatives like the promotion of green manufacturing and recycling under the circular economy approach are included e waste management rules of 2016 aim to increase e waste recycling capacity and ensure proper disposal of hazardous materials for example the indian government is encouraging solar energy adoption in manufacturing plants to reduce the carbon footprints so i hope this article covers the schemes which comes under the electronic manufacturing sector as a way forward to see the growth of the manufacturing sector in india and the challenges associated with it thank you for watching this video don't forget to give a like comment and a share and to further not to miss any other contents subscribe to our channel thank you and have a nice day